time. Um, thank you everyone for joining today and uh, we'll go ahead and get started uh, with the roll call. So Madam Parliamentarian, if you would call the roll. I have the uh, roll call roster from November. So I'm uh, assuming that's still the case. Uh, President Mary Johnston. Here. Sherry Pierce. Here. Pamela Smith. Here. Lana McPherson. Here. Sandry Pinsnall. Here. Ann Quirk. Here. Teresa Hudson. Here. Diane Flugfelder. Here. Camilla Pittman. Here. Sonia Talbert was having trouble. I don't think she got back on. Phyllis McGraw. I see her on this. I see her on the screen. I see your name. Mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm sorry. Okay. Here. Thank you. <laughs> Leticia Bastic. Here. Janice Bates. Here. Leon Wright. Here. Uh, PK Kamelik. Yeah. Marie Mo. Here. Janet Gray. Here. Helen Ingold. Here. Lisa Garcia. Here. Sabrina Mercadante. She's no longer a director. Thank you. Don Abramson. Here. Scott Passy. Here. Angela Bain. Here. Stephen Hike. Here. Sarah Jeffries. She did. And yeah. uh, thank you. And Hans Wright. I have just message hands. I think we had our timings out. We were going thinking it was an hour later. So I've just messaged him to remind him. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Connie. Um, I'd also like to welcome some uh, guests we have on the meeting today. And we do have incoming board member, Susan Haig. Lee Fraser, Angela Richberg, Angie Marshall, Marita Rood, Celine Hurtado, Ruth Post, Elko Grunenbaum, and we also have with us today Vice President Candidates Marianne Hess and P. Ruck. And I'm not sure if Ashley, yes, Ashley, you are on. Ashley Turney, I was going to swear her in, perform the oath of office for the Region 8 director, but we're going to have to wait till when we are in Grand Rapids. Um, she does not, she almost meets the qualifications to serve as a region director. Um, you have to uh, attend two annual conferences and she's only attended one, but she will be in Grand Rapids. So uh, President-elect Pierce will perform the oath of office to Ashley at the new board meeting on Thursday. So welcome everyone, we're glad you're here. So the uh, next item on the agenda is a, just a brief recap of our executive committee meeting that we held on Friday, February 26th and Saturday, February 27th in Grand Rapids. We had a great meeting. There were um, all of us in attendance. We had Sherry on virtually. And then we also had the three vice president candidates join us as well. Um, but just uh, briefly on our agenda, we um, had updates 
on the Grand Rapids conference that's coming up. Um, so we will have more items on our agenda at our board meeting in uh, May. We just did some uh, highlights of the constitutional amendments that will be coming before the membership in May. We had a policy committee update on the staff recognition program and you will see that on your agenda in May. And just kind of went over the annual business meeting process and the annual banquet that we will uh, have on Thursday. Uh, Chris gave us updates on uh, the department and staff. And uh, he did give us an update on uh, a new institute coming for Pennsylvania, which we're very excited about, and you'll be hearing more about that. They are working very hard to start up another institute there. Um, we did have more updates on the 2021 conference in Grand Rapids. Um, staff is working on a full education program, and you'll hear more about that. Um, the deadline for the early bird uh, registration was Monday. So I'm hoping that everyone got their information in. We went over the opening ceremony schedule for uh, Monday at the conference. Uh, we will not have international flags due to um, there will be with the travel restrictions we won't have anyone from Region 10 or Region 11 in, in attendance, which we're sad about, but we understand. Um, we uh, decided earlier that we will not have an offsite educational event. It's just with social distancing and everything that's going on, um, we would not be able to do that. Uh, we also just reviewed uh, some miscellaneous items uh, with the upcoming vice president election with voting starting next Monday, March 22nd, and we'll go through April 21st. Uh, so be watching for the ballots on that. And you'll also, or there'll also be an election in region 11 as well. Um, we talked a little bit about region eight restructure and Lisa Garcia will have more for us at the board meeting in May talked about future conferences and updates on those. Um, we did discuss uh, the strategic planning and especially with um, inclusivity, inclusivity and uh, for region directors. And we'll have more discussion on that at our meeting in May. Um, we will have some information later on in the agenda about the uh, symposium and the study abroad program. And um, you will be invited uh, incoming board members to an orientation that will be coming and outgoing, outgoing board members will have a exit interview and that will be after the 2021 or after the May conference. And then on Saturday, we did our selection or I should say President elect Pierce and Vice President Smith went over all the committee applications and made those selections. And you will be uh, hearing more about uh, the board liaisons and what committee you will be serving uh, this upcoming year. So more to come on that. So that was our meeting last month, very productive. Um, the Amway is a great location to hold meetings. They took very good care of us. So uh, I think we're gonna be in great hands uh, in May when we're there for the conference. And that's all I have to report on our meeting last month. So I'm going to turn it over to um, Chris, who will um, give us um, an update and we'll have board approval for the study a lot, or excuse me, for the study abroad and the symposium from Region 11. Is Chris there? Chris, are you muted? 
Karen needs to unmute me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, we're going to jump ahead to the Region 11 honorary membership and the amendments, and then I will come back on the conference update um, with some new information. So we've sent out the attachment, the report from Tom Vanderhoven regarding the study abroad and the symposium. And basically in a nutshell, the VVG, which is the Netherlands uh, Association with whom we affiliate, and the Region 11 Management Board is recommending to the IMC Board that the 22 Symposium and Study Tour be rescheduled to take place in September 2023, same location in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, pretty much the same itinerary. Their thoughts were that 2022 was too soon after COVID. They weren't sure about venues. They couldn't commit this early out. So that is the recommendation to the board, which we need a motion on. But before we do that, I don't know if Hans and Sarah wanted to add anything else to that report. Well, thank you, Chris. Um, uh, well, good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, I joined late, but I'm in the middle of uh, moving from one place to another. So I had to change over and get a, get all the dust out of my hair. and. Um, Made. Um, well, Chris, um, thank you. Uh, I think the information provided by Tom and uh, the things you just said, well, pretty much covered it. Um, VVG board had our meeting yesterday and uh, yeah, um, approved also that um, the, their annual meeting is, um, is in September uh, in the same week as, as the study tourist plans. So uh, yeah, no further uh, information uh, than you have just uh, shared with us. And I don't have anything else to add rather than that, Chris. Thank you. So, Ben, Mary, we need the board to uh, make a motion for that. I'll make a motion. Helen Ingold, Region 7, I make a motion. Oh that the proposed 2022 symposium and study tour be rescheduled to take place in September, 2023 in Amsterdam, Netherlands. Second the motion, Leticia Vosik, Town of Trophy Club. All right, there's been a motion and a second on the recommendation. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All, those, aye. all those that oppose say no. All right, the motion carries. We're sad. We're sad that it's being pushed another year, but we completely understand. So we'll look forward to that happening in 2023. Thank you. Well, the next item then would be the honorary membership recommendation. Chris? Did we lose him again? Chris, I see that there is a the sound is being reported as coming out of your microphone, but we can't hear you. Yeah, he had his video up earlier, but it's not there now. Chris, I'm on my way to your office. Thank you. 
<laughs> right. Can you hear me now? Can you see me? Perfect. Yay. Oh, okay. There you go. I wasn't hiding, I swear. <laughs> um, all right. We distributed the honorary membership, and I have um, put in bold the policy regarding retirement or assumption of positions other than municipal clerk. IMC past presidents shall be presented to the board of directors for consideration of honorary membership. I will not go through the two individuals and their biographies, but the recommendation is that that the board bestow honorary membership to Colleen Nickel and Lana McPherson and that the presentation be made at the opening ceremony at the 2021 conference in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you. Madam President, I am prepared to make a motion. Thank you, Don. Is there a second? This is Marie. I'll second it. Thank you, Marie. Is there any discussion on the motion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor of the recommendation, please say, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. All right, the motion has carried. And um, Lana, did you wanna say a few words? Just thank you to everyone. I, I just can't talk right now, but thank you from my heart. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lana. That's well-deserved for, for Lana and Colleen. So we look forward to making that presentation in Grand Rapids. Hey, moving on, Get my agenda back up here. Um, the constitutional amendments that will be presented at the annual business meeting. And I'll turn it over to Chris. Thank you, Mary. Um, again, it was part of your attachment and the, the first constitutional amendment, the one regarding the qualification of candidates for region director uh, was presented last year to the membership to um, regarding this discussion in St. Louis. And as you know, that conference was canceled. So it was postponed was run again and this go around, we have added the retired member amendment to the constitution. Both of these items have been published in the news digest and they will be presented at the uh, annual business meeting. There was a, a third possible amendment that the president assigned to the policy committee and that was regarding if IMC was not to hold an in-person annual business meeting, um, what would we do next? The committee continues to work on that they, we obviously, we do not have an amendment going forward. However, it will be in their May report for the board to review and comment from there. If the board approves that uh, report in May, then the amendment will be discussed and presented at the 2022 conference in Little Rock, Arkansas. So this is just more of an FYI than anything else. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Chris. Anyone have any questions? All right, thank you. And I believe the last item on our agenda is the conference update and recap. Yes, thank you. Um, I did send out that report. Please disregard what I've sent out. Um, last night, received a call from the uh, representatives from the DeVos Center in uh, Grand Rapids and the Amway. And we were told that the Kent County, which Grand Rapids is part of, issued a public health order that is effective immediately and that they are going to take over the DeVos place, which is the convention center where we were holding all our events. They're going to take that over through June 30th, 2021 and use it as a vaccination site. Um, I bring this up because that's where the conference was being held. So we're scrambling and we have found the, there is a sports arena 15 minutes from the Amway Hotel that the good news about the sports arena is that we can hold the opening ceremony, the all three general sessions, the annual business meeting, the annual banquet, 
and most likely the all conference event in that arena because the state is allowing up to 700 people to participate in that venue. To give you a contrast to that, the Amway Hotel right now under state orders will not allow more than 99 people in a particular ballroom. So moving it to the sports arena um, will work for us. The drawback to that is that it is a 15 minute walk from the Amway Hotel. So we are working with the city and the hotel and the center to get us shuttles. And of course those shuttles will loop, but we can only get X amount of numbers per shuttle. Again, social distancing applies there. Um, there is nothing else that we can do regarding the DeVos place. And the hotel and the city are working with us to try to make this as uh, streamlined and as easy as possible. So that's where we are right now. That's what we were working on. I will have more um, concise information in about 48 hours. We have a meeting with the Grand Rapids people sometime today and we'll have more information after that. As I said, the good news about the arena is that it will house everything. We don't have to switch, um, we don't have to separate people in terms of uh, the general sessions or the opening ceremony. In terms of the concurrent sessions, those right now are looking to be held at the Amway Hotel. We may use one of the ballrooms of the JW Marriott, which is connected to the hotel, but, it's, but it is across the street. And there's also a theater that's connected to the Amway where we could hold another couple hundred people there. So that's what we are looking at in terms of moving forward with the conference, the concurrent sessions. One thing about the concurrent sessions that I did want to bring up that Ashley was going to discuss, but what Ashley has organized is now out the window with the change in venue, is that the conference, IMC's conference committee has approved two things. One, pre-registering for the concurrent sessions. We can do, they can do that through their app, which will help us in terms of keeping the numbers to the minimum or maximum amount that the hotel and the state is asking us to do. And secondly, is that the conference committee has approved a flexi quiz assessment, meaning all attendees attending sessions that have to complete an assessment can now scan a QR code and that code will automatically provide them with an assessment for that class. For those members that are somewhat technically challenged, we will send an email to them regarding the assessment or they will go to the website and download the assessment for that session. So those are, two things that are keeping social distancing and contactless paper uh, at bay. Um, it'll also help us keep the numbers intact in terms of where we can put people um, in the hotel. Um, the good news about all this is that it does create social distancing, which is what the city and the state want us to do. Some of the, um, some of the concerns would be right now, we have an all conference event scheduled for Wednesday. I've reached out to the host committee this morning and they are going to discuss and see if we can't change it to Tuesday. Uh, if we change it to Tuesday, all that means is that the open night that we're allowing delegates to have on Tuesday will be switched over to Wednesday to accommodate the host committee. Um, but that should not be that big of a deal. They've put in a lot of work right now and I think just switching uh, the days should suffice unless there's uh, an issue with some of the entertainment that they've booked. Not too sure what we would do with the exhibit hall right now, because I have to see a layout in terms of what that sports arena can hold in terms of a layout and whether it would be conducive to hold an exhibit hall. The exhibit hall is up in the air. Uh, we have about five sponsors that have committed and six or seven vendors that have committed. Um, if we have to do away with the exhibit hall, it would not be an issue to contact them I'd rather not do away with it, but again, I do not know what that will look like. And um, the opening reception, which, I'm sorry. Okay. The opening reception that will be, would have been held in the exhibit hall Sunday evening from 5.30 to 6.30. The exhibit hall goes away. That opening reception will go away as well. However, what we can do is see if we can't provide an extra breakfast for the members 
on Tuesday. If they're getting one on Monday, we'll probably set one up for them on Tuesday as well if that goes away. Um, they have the, uh, the hotel and the center have asked us if we were amenable to changing dates from the conference from the first part of May to after June. And right now we told them no. Uh, between everybody's schedules and what everybody has planned to come to Grand Rapids, um, that would be that would be a tough turnover to try to impose on members right now. As of today, we have 481 delegates. We have 13 guests. We have a total of 530 bodies attending. That is pretty much the update in terms of what is going on with Grand Rapids. As I said, this just was conveyed to us last night. Um, that's where we are. So um, I'm open to questions or discussion or whatever President Johnson would like to do. I'll open it up for questions. Curious, this is Camilla. Yes. Which arena are we talking about? There's a sports arena 15 minutes away. I don't, I don't know the name off the top of my head, Camille. Okay, no, the question I had is I know that there's a walkway from the hotel that takes you to an arena and I did not know if that was the same one. Um, there's a walkway that could take you to the arena from the JW Marriott, which is across from the Amway. I'm not, maybe that's the same walkway. You just go through okay. the Marriott and then over. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Question. Yeah, I believe that is the walkway, uh, Camilla. But you know, I, my question is regarding the uh, concurrent sessions. What's the what's the protocol for the concurrent session, Chris? As of today, Leon, um, it is ninety nine people at the Amway per ballroom. And if we're running four or five concurrent sessions in the morning, and then we're repeating them in the afternoon. Uh, the largest ballroom will accommodate 99 people. Um, then you have another ballroom that might accommodate 60, and then it gets to 30, and then there's a theater that accom can accommodate 200. Um, at the end of this month, I believe the Michigan governor is going to have a conference and to determine whether or not they're going to open up the state. And if that's the case, and that will help us considerably. Thus, without, that's why we are um, going to install the uh, pre-registration for the concurrent sessions. That'll give us a better indication of how many people are attending each session and where to put those people. Just for information purposes, the numbers in Michigan are almost doubling. They're going up. So I'm not sure what the governor's gonna do at the end of March. I don't know. Yeah. Well, all I can say, Chris, is, and, and to the board, is that for everyone that doesn't know me, my name is Leon Wright. I'm the Region 5 Director. I live in Michigan. Um, I agree with Connie. I don't know what's going to, what she's going to do. I know she's on a lot of pressure to open up, which a lot of governors of, of a lot of states are under a lot of pressure to open up. Um, I'm not sure that going to happen by May, to be honest with you. I, I do know the governor pretty, pretty well. She's, she's, she's under a lot of pressure, but she don't fold her. She don't, really, she don't easily fold the pressure. So I, I do know it well. I don't know, I don't think that's gonna happen by May. Uh, we do wanna open up, but to open up in, by the 1st of May, I don't think it's gonna happen, not completely. Um, I'm just, I mean, I, I want to see a conference happen. You know, I, uh, I hope we can push forward with this, but I'm always the person that, that here on the side of, of safety. Um, and I'm just, just going to put it out there. I, I, haven't, I haven't, I'm affiliated with other conferences that we sort of know, I normally go to during the year. This is the only one that moving forward this close. 
in 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 the in the year. We we're talking about less than two months of two months away now, and we're pushing forward to a full fledged conference. I'm always going to be supportive of, of the IIMC conference. I'm just going to be honest and, and tell you I don't know if that's a that's a great the greatest idea that we could have came up with. Um, I know it's happening. You're going to go forward with it. I'm going to try to be there. Uh, hopefully, I'm registered to be there. I paid my I paid my registration fee. I got a hotel room. My plans is to be there, but I'm always going to err on the side of caution. Um, I do hope I do I do hope most of the people have ever if they haven't gotten have tried to get a vaccine. I've gotten mine, I can tell you that. But still, I wouldn't want to put nobody else in at harm. That's my point of view. I mean, I know there's a lot of different points of views out here regarding this this issue, but that's my point of view. Thanks, Leon. Um, Chris, Angela put uh, something in the chat, a question. Are you able to advise how Region 10 and 11 members can part participate in the IIMC conference? Will electronic participation be available? Um, we will have a hybrid board development and a hybrid board meeting, same as we did at the, at the mid-year meeting but there are no plans to have a hybrid conference. It's either in person, which is what I believe the board wanted to do in November. Uh, if for some reason it's not in person, then we are prepared to have a virtual conference, but it'll, right now it's just going to be an in-person conference. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I, 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 have, a, I have a question in um, regards to Leon's comments. Will we be taking extra um, safety precautions um, for those attendees like temperature taking and uh, should we require a pre um, screening before they arrive? I'm just wondering if there's something more we couldn't do to protect those that haven't, I mean, I'll have had my shots, my second shot by then. Um, I'm just wondering if there's something that we can do a little bit extra to help ensure safety of those attending? Um, legally, taking a temperature and requiring pre-screening doesn't, doesn't hold much water. However, um, all the social distancing protocols will apply. So everybody will have to wear masks. We will have a form at registration that they will complete basically just uh, a self-assessment that Everyone is fine. Everyone got on a plane fine. No one's aware of being sick, cough, things of that nature. We'll have that there. We're also looking into hiring um, security as, so that they, in case people start to cluster or clump, uh, in case people are walking around without masks, just for someone to let them know to please put that on. Uh, the hotel adheres to a strict policy regarding social protocols and social distancing. The executive committee and People that attended the mid-year meeting in November can certainly attest to that. Mm -hmm. um, the hotel is incredibly, very efficient, very safe in terms of cleanliness, in terms of um, Purell hand stations, uh, room service does not exist, things of that nature. They've taken precautions with that. Um, we're going to do our best to let everybody know that everything still applies regarding social distancing um and we'll go from that point but at, at, i mean really you basically every delegate will have to self-police and make sure that they're abiding by what the laws are and what has made them safe to this point well i would hope that everybody and we're all adults so hopefully everybody would behave <laughs> yeah. thanks sandy is there any other questions Yes, or concerns? All right, I'll go with Terry and then Helen. Hi, and again, in light of Leon's comments, and I think the elephant in the room is, is there still a chance that this conference could be canceled? 
there is a chance that the conference could be canceled in one of uh, two ways. Um, IMC can cancel the conference. And we have a statement from the hotel that I received that absolves us of all penalties. So we would again walk away without having to pay any kind of penalty whatsoever, which is a, a big plus for us. Uh, the only other way it would be canceled is if the CDC or the state at the last minute decides that things were just too spiking and any kind of event cannot be held, that would be on them. Both ways absolve IMC of any penalties. Um, but that, as of today, the Amway is really stressing and hoping that we would continue to have a conference regardless of whether we bring in 500 people or 100 people. So that's, that's the way they're looking at it. And, they're try and they are working with us in terms of any kind of protocol that you can imagine regarding being safe. But that's the best that I know of right now, Terry. Okay, thanks. And I'm very disappointed to hear that the numbers are increasing, Leon. That's, I was hoping to hear the opposite. So hopefully vaccines will be helping that in the next couple of months. But thanks for that update. Thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. Helen? Hi, um, I, my question was about elevators because when we were in the older part, which is I believe where we're all gonna be, there was a, like a two person limit in the elevator. So will the hotel work with us for like a stairway up and down so that we're not all waiting for elevators? Cause that wasn't a problem with the few of us that were there then, but we'll be talking about a much greater number of people trying to use the elevator with a very low limit. That is in front of the Amway right now. That was in front of them when we were there in February in terms of increasing the number of people on the elevators. There is not much that they can do to police. Right now it's two per elevator, but if four people got on or five people got on and those five people are, are friends and familiar with each other, it's not as if the hotel is going to make a comment on that. But we are speaking with them in terms of making it more of an official statement from the hotel in terms of the number of people allowed on the elevator. There, there is no staircase that'll take you from the 10th floor down to the bottom without people being wounded or, or what have you. So the elevators are really the only way to go. Um, so we'll know more as we, as we get closer. But right now it is two per elevator. Lana? I was one of those people that was there in November and in February and been so forth. been flying from Kansas City into Midway and then also I had to fly into O'Hare change planes, all of that. I felt very safe, very secure. And honestly, uh, for those of you who have been flying during this pandemic, the airplanes are probably cleaner now than they were when they were new. Uh, if you sit around waiting to get on the next flight, you see the cleaning crew go through with their little um, sanitizing machine and all of that. So um, it's quite impressive. Um, as most of you know, I'm 68 years old. I am not afraid. I, I, continue to live my life, not going to live it in fear. And as someone said previously, yes, we are all adults. We each have to make a decision that works best for our lifestyle. But I think that um, with the protocols that the Amway has in place and what IIMC is working with, we'll make it. And just everybody think positive. Uh, Kansas is yellow. Hopefully we're gonna stay that way. Um, we're in phase four of vaccination. So hopefully Michigan will be right behind us. Um, Kansas is doing um, large conferences again, and those are planned for this year. And the insurance board I was on a meeting with this morning, um, they are doing in-person meetings now. All their staff will be back to work in the office April 1st. So Kansas and Missouri, we're, we're doing okay right now. Um, secondly, now that I have my composure back, for those of you who may not have heard um, I will be retiring June 1st. Um, kind of came up on me a little bit, but 
um, that's the reason, I guess, that Chris put my name in there. So um, just want to thank all of you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and your support. And thank you. Thank you, Lana. Um, Janice had put something in the chat. What is our absolute last day to cancel? Our last day to cancel is really up to us. What if we cancel too close to the conference, then we take the risk of um, upsetting those individuals who have purchased plane tickets and have registered. The refunding part of it is not an issue, but it's the, the flights that they have shelled out uh, dollars for. So um, we're in mid-May, we're in mid-March. I would think we would want to give people at least a good four to five weeks before the conference is scheduled. So within three mid weeks, two to three weeks, maybe. Okay, mid-April. At the latest, because the conference yeah. is early. Right, right. Uh, Scott put a message in chat. Due to various reasons related to the pandemic, vaccine distribution and professional and personal issues, I'm not able to attend the conference in person. But if there is an option for remote attendance, I'm confident I could participate in most of the sessions. Yeah, Mary, can I address that for a minute? Yes. Um, I will be sending um, the IMC board and the foundation board um, a survey, not a, a questionnaire, basically trying to confirm who will and who will not be there. I'll send that out today and you can just respond back to me. And it does take into consideration cities that will not, will not allow members to travel and things of that nature. But we also need to be as concise as possible in terms of the total number of bodies in that hotel. Uh, years past, they didn't care, but we have well over 500 rooms that have been reserved. And we just need to know if those are indeed going to be occupied because it will help with, with the concurrent sessions and social distancing. And in terms of what Leon brought up, we're only going by what the numbers are today. I don't know what will happen at the end of the month. I am not um, surmising anything regarding what the governor is going to do. I'm just saying as of today, the most that we could have in any ballroom would be 99. If it, if it improves at the end of March, that's fantastic for us. Otherwise we're, we're planning a conference regarding the numbers as of today. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chris. Oh, Leanne, did you have a comment? Uh, let's see if she had a before me. Okay, we'll come back to you. Letty, go ahead. And I wanna I wanna apologize, Letty. I should have mentioned when I said the vice president candidates were on that you're also a vice president candidate as well. So I sorry for failing to mention that. That's okay, thank you. Um, so as Leon stated, I'm, I'm a little concerned too, uh, being that our governor has opened up Texas and the numbers seem to be increasing as well here. Um, I, I've uh, already secured my hotel room. Um, I haven't modified the stays yet. And then I need to, of course, still register, but uh, the Alamo chapter is paying for my registration and I'm waiting for them to send that in. But knowing what we know today and knowing what Leon just mentioned and also the numbers doubling there, why, why aren't we looking at, at uh, June, uh, at least looking at it to see what can be done if we have to postpone it to then? You would, you would be postponing it to July. They're using the center through June 30th. So it would have to be in July. If that is something that you want us to look into, we can look into dates, but then I don't know how that is going to affect people who have registered already and what their plans are after, uh, after the May date. Personally, I believe we should look into it we, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen. We just know what today brings before us, but we don't know what's going to happen. And if we knew, we wouldn't be here, of course. But um, 
why not take a look at that, even if it's July, just because the state may come out and cancel everything, being that we're not going to be penalized and we're absolved from any of those penalties, I believe that's something we should be doing. Would the board like me to research July dates with the hotel and the center? I, I would, just so that we have that backup plan. What's, what's the board's pleasure? Chris, it's Angela Chris. Beans here from the um, Region X director. I'm just wondering if it's possible to research July through to September. Um, being in the holiday months, it's um, obviously if, if traveling's open it up and people are vaccinated, people are going to be traveling and wanting to spend time with their families. So from my perspective and hoping that we can cross borders, September would be a, a better alternative. Thanks, Angela. Mary? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Chris. Um, yeah, the, I can appreciate um, the situation in Region 10, Angela. If we continue to push the conference back, then it runs into the 2022 conference. Uh, from staff's perspective, we start working on the next conference probably a week after we get back in May. So let's say by June 1st, we are already rolling into 2022. Um, to plan a conference in 2022 and continue to try to push this uh, farther is going to affect both conferences. So I could look for July dates. I understand those are holiday dates and I'm not really sure what the availability would be, but I can do that and get back to the board and see if that's amenable. But if we go into July, August, or even September, um, I'm also afraid that we may not get the turnout only because of budgets. So. All right, thanks, Chris. Um, I'm trying to keep track of the chat. Um, Stephen, you wanted to speak? Uh, I did. Uh, thank you, Mary. Um, I, to, I appreciate looking at alternate dates. Uh, uh, you know, in, I, I agree with what uh, Angela said. Uh, certainly, the longer we push out, the more likely that international people will be able to attend uh, because it, it, I think we all potentially realize that a lot of this is based on vaccination numbers and percentages in our various countries, provinces, states, et cetera. Uh, but uh, my question was actually, it, it's on, um, I do recall that uh, uh, when the conference was canceled last year, people or members had the option of transferring their membership, uh, their, uh, their conference fees to this year. Uh, for those who are not able to attend this year, because I, I'd imagine this is relevant to a lot of international people, will that option be provided uh, uh, again since uh, the option of either refund or just to transfer those fees to the next year? Absolutely, Stephen. Uh, we will not uh, penalize anyone regarding this situation. So if somebody cannot make it, if somebody was attending 2020 and pushed it to 21 and cannot attend 21, we're going to make them the offer of, of moving it to 2022 or a refund, whatever their preference. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Stephen. Um, Dawn had a uh, question in chat. She wants to know how will meals be handled? Meals, well, when we were in the DeVos Center, we were going to have a box lunch and then we were going to have a buffet with the uh, DeVos wait staff uh, serving every delegate with distancing. If we move into the sports arena, we have yet to look at that because nothing has been confirmed yet. But looks like a box lunch would probably be the best way to go. And if there's a way to do a plated sit down, meaning that the minute you come in and you sit at your uh, table, that's when the wait staff would come and serve you. That's what they did um, with us in February and at the EC meeting. Once we sat down, the meal came. So those are the two options right now. We're still exploring more safety options regarding meals, Don. Okay, uh, Sandy and then um, Ann. Yeah, I just wanna um, talk about the chance 
excuse me, changing it to after July 1, I believe that most towns or uh, cities are in a fiscal year, July 1. So that would mean two, two conferences within one budget period, which would probably eliminate people attending in the 2022 conference if they decided to choose to go to the 2021. Um, that's a lot of strain on budgets, and especially when they've been cut so drastically as it is because of the pandemic. So um, I know it stinks, but I would, I would still go for do it and let's get it over with and move on to the next year. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thanks, Sandy. Ann? Thank you. Um, I, Sandy stole my thunder, but that was where I was going. Um, but I also wanted to let you all know that although I've had my two shots, thank you, um, we have had the very first um, deviant to the COVID here um, on Cape Cod. So right here in Barnstable County. So uh, it, and I've supposedly, it doesn't, uh, the, the deviant, the newest version of this COVID from Africa doesn't um, respond well to our shots. So although I wanna push forward and let's do this, I can see that this is gonna start a whole new issue for a lot of people. Thanks. Thank you, Ann. Um, let me get caught up in the chat. Uh, Phyllis says, I may not be able to attend in July. We already have our municipal league at the end of July. We are planning that in person. Camilla says the MASC in South Carolina, South Carolina is conducting its annual conference in July in person. And then Helen, COVID numbers are down in St. Louis. You're all welcome here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So are there any other comments or questions? Janet. Well, first of all, uh, Chris and Ashley and everyone, thank you for everything you've done. This has been an extremely difficult thing to deal with the last two years. And I know it's taken a lot of your time. Um, my only thing is if it is going to cancel and go fully virtual, uh, you'd probably need at least 30 days before the conference because if you make a reservation, airline reservation after 30 days before a date, it gets more expensive. Um, but I, I know that you're doing the best you can to make this happen in person. And I just want you to know, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes making these plans for us. <laughs> yeah. Thank Thanks, you. Janet. Is there anyone else? What, one last question. Uh, how, how will you have the, um, how will that banquet? I'll be out on Chris on Wednesday night, I believe it is. Yes. Um, the banquet, if, if we go forward and we are using the sports arena, obviously the sports arena is large enough to have social distancing. Uh, most likely we will have four people at a table instead of eight or 10 as we've had in the past. There will not be a head table, unfortunately, because of social distancing, unless it's going to be six miles wide um, so we, we will have the board up front. Um, we'll still have a procession and um, we'll have a banquet. We'll have speeches, we'll have presentations and but people will be, will be spread out. That's the good thing about the sports arena is that it's a, there's a hockey rink in there. So you can imagine exactly how large it is um, moving forward. Thanks, Leon. Are there any other questions? Phyllis put in chat, Louisiana is at 50% capacity and we hope the governor eases them more next week. Come on down. <laughs> 50 at a time. All right, if there's no other comments or questions, um, would you like staff to investigate looking at July dates as possible conference opportunity? I get some head nods or no, There's, I see some saying yes, some no. 
Mary, you might want to ask them to raise hand, use the raise hand feature and get a number that way. Okay. Does everyone know how to use the raise hand feature? I don't see it on mine. I don't see it on mine either. Do we go into participants? It's at the bottom. Yeah. Mm -mm. It still doesn't come up. If you open up. your chat, you'll see reactions. You have to click the reactions button. Yeah, I see all the reactions, but there's not a hand. There's a thumbs up. You could use the thumbs up. Okay, or yes or no. Okay. Thank you. Okay, is everybody. Okay. Madam President, I see hands going up. What is that? Is that for or against? That would be four. I understand having staff investigate July dates. Is that correct, Connie? However you want to phrase it so that they know what they're voting on. Okay, so if and, you're- and Sorry to point out, but you can only vote if you're a member, uh, a sworn yeah. member of the board. Maybe That's correct. You have to be a board member. Maybe here in the, com here in the comments, I don't think July is gonna be a good month. I don't know, just by listening to what and seeing the chat, what people are saying in the budget year, I I kind of think, think along with what Janice is saying, either we go ahead with the date we're going with, or you or you don't have it at all. So I don't, I, I want to, I want to say also, the comment I made, please don't let it def defer in one thoughts about coming to Michigan for this conference. I just made I would have had to make the opinion regarding what I know is going on and what it is right now. Hopefully it gets better. I know vaccine vaccination is getting better here. Hopefully we'd be better. I know we'll be better by June, but May, I don't know where we'll be at. We are open completely, uh, giving it trying to give everyone vaccines now. We just open it up to 16 and, and older at the uh at the uh, stadium downtown, so you can go out, anyone can get a vaccination right now if you're 16 and older. Uh, hopefully that helps. Uh, so I don't want to discourage anyone. So, we, because I don't, I, I think we're at a point now where you, Chris, you, you might have to just go forward with it. Uh, trying to cancel at this, at this time and the venture is uh, pretty, getting it pretty close. So I don't want to discourage anyone. Michigan is uh, 50, at 50% right now, occupancy based on the venue you're in. So um, hopefully, hopefully we get it get, gets better with vaccines. If I may. All right, thanks, Leon. Well, based on what I see in the participants, we're just going to move forward like we are having the conference in May. And Hopefully that will happen and things will loosen up up there that we're able to do that. Is there anything else, Chris, on the conference? Uh, no, other than the survey. And as I said, we have close to 500 people that are attending. And um, as I mentioned earlier, they don't know the DeVos place. So if we are having the conference and the sessions are in the sports arena, we're just going to try to make it a wonderful uh, conference experience um, as if that was where we were going to be uh, from, from day one. And uh, based on what everybody's saying, if you were asking for my recommendation, I would say we move forward until unless the city of the state cancels us. But um, we've worked as I said, we do have a virtual conference in our back pocket as Ashley presented to the board in November. Um, if something was to happen, we can definitely launch that. It'll probably take a couple of weeks to do, but we could do that. And then that way everybody at least will get a conference, um, the education component. But right now I think we go forward with Grand Rapids in May and uh, that's it. 
All right, thank you, Chris. I appreciate the update and the report and, and you'll keep the board up to date as, as things come down the pike on yes. the conference. Okay, yes. great. All right. Mary, I have, I have one other question about the conference. Excuse me, sure. um, Chris, you, you have made the reservations for the board. Yes. You, and you've made it for the whole week. I've made it for the whole week. Once I get the confirmation numbers, I will send them to you individually and I will let you know to contact the hotel. Okay, that was IMC, my question. Okay. IMC, yeah, IMC will be paying for your Thursday night and your Friday night stay because we're asking you to come in early for the board development. So you, you will be out of pocket beginning Saturday through the Thursday night for the banquet. And that's where you need to call the hotel and you put that those nights on your city card or your own card, but wait until I forward you the confirmation numbers. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Sandy. Well, with that, I believe we have nothing else on our agenda, so I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting, and I look forward to seeing all of you Hopefully, most of you, I know some of you cannot travel, but uh, we will see you virtually at least. But uh, everyone take care and um, we'll see you in May in Grand Rapids. Thank you for attending. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Be well.